My name is Christopher Gurusami and I'm a Bharatanatyam dancer. Now, straight away, many of you have decided that because I'm a dancer, I must be effeminate, gay, or a pansy. You could believe that what I do is old, antiquated, and boring. That only girls dance, or you think that I dress up like a girl when I perform. Maybe you're trying to figure out if I'm Catholic, or Hindu, maybe an atheist, or a Brahmin. Or if I'm Tamil or North Indian. Or maybe I'm a foreigner. Or which one of my parents is the brown one. Now, some of these things might be true, and some of them false, and in reality, none of it matters, because through my dance, I've learned who I am. I've learned not to be afraid, because, well, why should I be? Most of you might have heard about Bharatanatyam, and have possibly seen it, and no, I'm not talking about the dancing in that movie, Chennai Express. Some of you might have avoided and have been scarred through watching bad performances and endless arrangements and look, fair. Because, like most things, when it's bad, it's bad, but when it's good, it's a whole different story. There's been a long debate about boys and dance, and I feel like it's done. Where boys, we dance, get used to it. But what does it mean to be a boy who dances Bharatanatyam today? It's very important for me to acknowledge the privilege that I have, both economically and socially, and with the able body that I have. This is a talk from my point of view and from my understanding, because dance is my life. Dance has been my companion my entire life. My English mother learned Bharatanatyam and was a student of my Tamil paternal aunt and alumni of Kalakshetra, Mrs. Jayalakshmi Raman, in Perth, Western Australia. My mum met my father through dance. And after they got married, my mother danced with me through her pregnancy. And straight after having me, we both went back to dance class. Though I was an observer, I quickly became a student. And when I turned 18 in 2005, I came to India to try to learn to dance in Kalakshetra. And 15 years later, here I am talking to you about what I love. I've always danced, and if it wasn't Bharatanatyam, it was jazz, or tap, or gymnastics. I even tried Irish dancing once, because all I wanted to do was dance. Growing up in Australia, as a child, I would put on a full performance with my Barbies at very little notice. I would dress myself in a dance costume for any visitor that came to our house. My friends in primary school were the girls from my dance class. <laughs> and out of a thousand plus students in my high school, I was the only boy to choose dance as a subject. Now, was I bullied in school for being a brown femi dancer? Bet I was. But what if I had listened to the bullies on the playground growing up? Or, you know, to some of my teachers in college and in schools? Maybe if I thought, you know what, everyone's right. Bollywood and jazz are so much more exciting than Bud Panagia. I might, have not, I might not have had the guts to be here today because it takes a lot of balls to be a male dancer. The form, like many styles of dance in India, has its own unique texts and treaties, but what's very special is the artistic musical legacy that comes with the form that we have via the hereditary community of artists. Right now is a very important time in the dance world. And it's necessary for us to, to listen to the voices of these hereditary artists from these marginalized communities. You know, as they share their views in helping us understand the past, where the form comes from, and the continuing invisibilization of these voices and their art. Now, when you dance, a large component of the form is a motive, which we call Abhinaya. We explore through these texts, a myriad of human emotions and relationships, where the gods we venerate in temples become friends, kings become lovers, and friends become the deliverers of messages. Through these songs that are three to four hundred years old, we can try to explain to Krishna how much our friends pine in love with him. We can accuse Muruga of infidelity and tell him to leave at once. We can tell Lord Shiva how in love with him we are in this very moment and request Devi to show us grace and mercy. 
For us dancers, the gods become tangible. The spirit of the lyrics are so beautiful in their simplicity, and allowing the dancer to really find themselves within each of the stories that we have. Though, through the pieces, though the pieces are female first person narratives predominantly, I believe they are so much more. They're more feminine in spirit rather than practice. For me, when I take away these romanticized ideas, you know, the gods, the kings, the hand gestures and facial expressions, the costumes and the jewelry, the dance is really about relationships and in many ways the yearning of the human soul for love and acceptance. I look at these pieces as an opportunity to explore the human experience. You know, as a male dancer who learns and practices and performs these compositions, it's actually a lot to wrap your mind around. For me, as an NRI, I not only choose to understand what a woman could feel like in a particular situation, she has to be Indian in tone and notion to fit the time of the piece and do justice to the message. But how do I do this? How do I find my truth in the piece simultaneously during performance? For me, life and the experiences of my journey in many ways seem almost half-lived. As I go through emotions, I also try to, to store how I feel in that moment. For example, meeting my nephew for the first time opened my mind to understanding what unconditional love of a mother like Yashoda could have. Being hurt by love and lovers are wounds that I sometimes have to open up to relive the experiences, to make the experience for myself and the audience to be, you know, true. But the greatest joy is being in love and understanding how that feeling can radiate through your entire being. This is the foundation of emotion for me. And then it takes me to bigger and a harder step. How do I become this Nayaka? Which is pretty much the same as, what does it mean to be a woman? As a cisgendered man, I have to understand the tightrope that is understanding and embodying rather than perpetuating over-exaggerated false stereotypes. From what I've understood, it's about, it's about embodying what a woman is. Intent plays such a huge role in deciding and negotiating these ideas. But what I've always been baffled by was this idea that women aren't equal to men. Women surpass men, in my opinion. I'm so lucky to have been raised, educated, and befriended by so many women throughout my life that the idea that they could be lesser makes absolutely no sense to me. There have been two women in my dance journey who have really influenced and helped shape my dance ideology. The first is Leela Sampson. I was fortunate to be in Kalakshetra during her tenure as director and was a member of Spandha Dance Company for five years, which was almost like an incubation period for me. I got to watch her in process and create. Her broad mind approach to dance made me view what I had learned in a new and interesting way. And Braga Besso, who I have learned from for almost a decade and I continue training with, she opened my eyes to the poetry of dance and is someone who guides and shares rather than teaches. These and so many women have continued to make me feel strong. And I feel lucky that through dance I get to explore the intricacies of, of the feminine and in turn, you know, what it is to be a badass. But at the same time, apparently, it's extremely simple. I asked one of my dance heroes, A. Lakshmanaswami Anna, who, who really ted, he treads this tightrope with ease. One moment he's Radha and the next second he's Krishna. I said one day, Anna, how do you do it? How do you lose yourself in composition? Now, I thought this was a profound question and waited a profound statement. He looked at me and he said, you have lyrics, you do them. Why should I be afraid of anyone? Let them talk. Is this love some secret for them to hide? If I love him and he loves me, then why should be anyone's prerogative to say anything? Let them talk. It is my luck that I've gotten to be with him. I've accepted it willingly. How can I hide this love? It's like trying to squeeze an elephant through a door. Impossible. Why should I be afraid of anyone's words? These are the words of my favorite piece and the central idea of this talk. A Tamil poem of Madhuri Kavi in Begada from the 18th century. 
I honestly believe in many ways it's as true today as it was then. Here, the Nayaka are the protagonist just walking to meet her lover, the king of this town. Noticing others gossiping about her, she cares very little about their opinions and clearly states it to her friend and anyone who's in earshot. Now, that's total badass. The idea is similar to so many pop songs that we listen to today. This and so many Padams and Javis are modern in notion. You know, there is modern ideas that can be found in the classical forms. It's up to each of us to go in and explore. To me, this is a very interesting piece. It speaks of so much, you know. In, this, in its historical context, I think that it's a very bold choice of character. She speaks her mind. She isn't afraid of others opinions and is proud of the love that she's managed to get for herself. But look, enough about her. Why do I see this as such an important piece in my dance journey? For me, it has so many of my experiences. What if, what if I had listened to the words of other people? What if I had worried about what you thought of this talk? What if, what if I had worried about what other people thought about me and what I do and who I love? What if my parents had listened to others and put me in soccer, instead of letting me follow my passions? I know so many boys who want to learn dance but were not necessarily allowed, or were corralled into learning different arts or sports or other manly things by parents who didn't want them to turn out a particular way. Still not sure which way that is, but anyway, I'm sure it's fabulous. There's nothing wrong with a life of dance, and I'm so lucky to be on this journey. In so many ways, it helps me to strip myself of an identity. I don't think that dance makes you girly or effeminate, and if it does, so what? That's your inner truth coming out, and that inner truth in a world that is full of lies, a world with no empathy, a world full of misinformation is the most beautiful and honest thing you can share, and we need more of that today. This piece can be, it's such a positive message of believing in oneself. It reminds me of a famous quote of RuPaul, if they ain't paying your bills, pay them no mind. Now, I 1,000% believe that this character would have said something like this and looked absolutely fierce in her sari while she was saying it. It speaks of pride, that love is love, and as the Beatles said, all we need is love. On September 8, 2018, when Section 377 was amended here in India, I remember hearing this poem in my head, and this, like, the second I heard the news, and though there are many, many things that we need to do moving forward, what a major step was for the queer community here in India. There was, though there is continued prejudice and I by no means think that the fight is over, it was a small step in saying, why should I, why should we be afraid? It is this intent that informs my choice to perform a piece like this. That doesn't mean to get this across I need to come out wearing a rainbow flag costume and look quite honestly, if I did, so what? But it makes the piece I believe, it makes it my own. I can form the hands as I've been taught by my teacher, Srimati Braga Bessel. But it's when I use my intent to make the piece speak my own truth that it starts to have, or at least I hope to have, more resonance and as a, for me and both the audience. Self-acceptance is such an intrinsic part of my dance journey. I found that knowing my truth allows me to live the truth of others through dance. I believe it's so important to understand yourself, to take, to take on these characters and to give them life by forgetting yourself and living in their shoes. Oh well, I guess in this case it's anklets, you know, whatever. It's so important that we learn to love ourselves because if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? And yes, that is another quote from RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> I think when we leave the rules at home and explore without walls and boundaries, that's when we begin to understand the possibilities within a form. Dance for me is so much more than, than even this talk. This is a small sample of the world of Indian classical dance forms. There is so much thought that is going into creating dance. 
there is so much waiting in books to be discovered. There is so much happening in performances waiting for an audience to give dance another go. Dance, dance to me is not for the elite, it's for everyone. Dance should be for everyone. There are the echoes of everyone's stories that can be found in dance if you open yourself to the experience that the arts have. The idea of dance, as I understand, is to go beyond body and gender and for the dancer to bring the audience along with them while looking at universal truths. Now look, I know this all sounds a bit cliché, but it's, it's honestly true. For me, my dance has really forced me to look at myself and discover who I am and accept my faults and flaws and to then leave them in the door or in the wings. So I can, I, I can try to enter into the spirit of someone unknown because why would I be afraid to just be myself? Thank you so much for listening.